Hello, Math 8 students. This is Unit 1, Lesson 3, Grid Moves. We're going to start developing a little bit more fine-tuned vocabulary on these different moves that we've been seeing and experiencing. Um, but to get started, before we do that, I want to do this notice and wonder. Um, this is called the isometric grid. It looks different than the rectangular grid that you're probably used to seeing. Uh, so to get started, we're going to do a notice and wonder. And what that means is I want you to write down at least one thing that you notice. A notice is something that's like a fact. It's something that's visual. You can see it. You can kind of prove it. Then, after you write down one thing that you notice, then I want you to write down one thing that you wonder. When you see this isometric grid, you probably have some questions. So that's what you're wondering. I want you to pause the video. Write down one thing that you notice about this isometric grid and one thing that you wonder from this isometric grid. Pause the video now. Let's talk about some things that students in my other classes have noticed and wondered. Some things that they noticed is that this is a triangular pattern. Other students notice that there are a bunch of straight lines. Sometimes we're so focused on the triangles that we don't see that this is a whole bunch of straight lines. Not only do we have straight lines that are all going this way, we also have straight lines going this way. And straight lines that are going this way. Other students noticed that this is a grid, but it's sort of diagonal. I was really surprised at this statement. Students noticed that every one of these lines is a reflection line. Let's take a look and we can see here's a triangle and we can see the mirror image on the other side. We see that with every one of these sets of lines that they are reflecting lines. And at least one more thing that's really important to notice, and if you didn't notice it before, I really want to make sure that you notice it now. I want you to see that this straight line and every straight line forms a 180 degree straight angle. However, within that 180 degree straight angle, I want you to see that it's composed of three smaller angles. Here's one. Here's two and here's three, which means if that whole angle here is 180 degrees and we're splitting that up into three smaller angles, what I really want you to take away is that each one of these angles is 60 degrees. That's going to be helpful later. Now, since I can't hear different things that you wondered, I'll tell you some things the other students wondered as they viewed this image. One thing that I wondered is I kind of thought of our rectangular grid and how our own address system is based on a rectangular grid. So I wondered what would it be like if our address system was based on this triangular grid. Right now our houses are rectangular. If we used a grid like this I wonder if they'd have to be triangular. Other students just wanted to know, what is this even used for? Other students wanted to know, why triangles of all shapes? You probably wondered some other really important things, and although the wondering is a really important exercise, it's not something that we are going to be talking about. But wondering really activates that different part of your brain that really helps us learn more in depth. So moving on past our isometric grid, we're going to start talking about transformations. Um, students who had me in class 
use tracing paper to do different transformations. Um, I'm going to show you both digitally how we would do them here, but I also want you to take advantage of the applet, so I will be showing you the applet as well. When you return to in-person learning, or if at any point you need to do this on your own at home and you don't have access to an applet, like on a test, knowing how to do it with tracing paper would also be really helpful. The first thing that we need to do is we have triangle ABC and we're asked to translate triangle ABC so that A lands on A prime. The directions for that are right down here. It says in figure one, translate triangle ABC so that A goes to A prime. So remember from our previous lessons that a translation is really just a slide. So that means without twisting or turning this figure, I'm going to just slide it so that A is in the A prime position. I'm going to switch gears to the applet so that you can see what this is supposed to look like when you're doing uh, the digital transformations. Here we have that same triangle, ABC, and we have A prime. But you'll see that we can't just pick it up and move it like we were with my own version. Instead, I'm going to demonstrate how to use these geometry tools to do each of those transformations. As we move on from one question to the next, you can just slide this slider and it will change each one of those questions with the new information that we need. For right now, we're going to focus on that first question. And again, the directions were to slide it or translate it so that A lands on A prime. In order to do this digitally with this geometry software, we first need to create a vector. You might remember from Despicable Me, the uh, villain is Vector. He says that Vector is a mathematical quantity. It is an arrow that represents both direction and magnitude because he's committing crimes with both direction and magnitude. So a quick discussion on Vector. This Vector that I draw is an arrow and it shows the direction that we are going to be moving. You can see it's going up and to the right. And it also shows the magnitude, meaning the amount. I'm not just moving to here, I'm moving in that direction all the way to A prime. So now that we have created our vector, now we're ready to use that geometry software to translate. <clears throat> this button right here is the translate button. And when you click on it, it tells you translate by vector. It also tells you the directions. It says first select the object to translate, then select the vector. Well, the object I want to translate is this whole shape. So I will select that whole shape. The next thing I need to click is the vector. And you can see that it moved triangle ABC to its new position, A prime, B prime, C prime. A has been moved to A prime. And that's how you do translations in this geometry software. I'm going to reset it and get it ready for question two. But I'm going to return to the other document first. This one, we are translating figure two. In figure two, we're translating triangle ABC so that C this time goes to C prime. So C is going to move to C prime. Should look like that. It's okay if the figures overlap. If they do, that means that you've done it correctly. Practice this one in the applet. Pause the video long enough that you can try translating it. After you've paused it and tried it for yourself, then I will repeat those directions to make sure that you have done it correctly. Pause the video now. I'm not sure if you had trouble with your applet the way that I did. Let me explain some of the issues that I encountered. If I simply tried to add the vector to go from C to C prime and then immediately click this button, it caused some issues. So instead I clicked on this button just to kind of reset it and then I was ready to click on the translate by vector. I click the object to translate and then the vector. It's still creating that issue. I have tried this so many times. So online learners, I am sorry that this applet is just not working out the way that it's supposed to. I wish I had an explanation as to why, and I do hope that it's working out better for you, but I am not having luck here in this video. I'll try it one more time before I give up. That's Perseverance, Math Practice 1. Creating my vector that goes from C to C prime. I'm going to click on this, make sure my objects are all there, everything seems good. Translate by vector, I'm going to choose the object. Yeah, 
then I'm going to choose that vector and it's just not working. Um, if you're encountering the same issues, I just want you to see that I can translate it myself. It's not how it's supposed to work, but we make it do, right? Uh, now, the next problem is a little bit more complicated. And it's difficult to model in this particular software because this isn't geometry software, this is presentation software. So it doesn't always do things the way that I want it to do. In figure three, we're supposed to rotate the triangle 90 degrees counterclockwise using center O. So again, this is really difficult to model because when I try and rotate it, it doesn't allow me, this presentation software doesn't allow me to choose the rotation point. So whenever I rotate, it just rotates around the middle. So I can rotate at 90 degrees, however, I'm not going to be able to rotate at 90 degrees around this, uh, this center of rotation. I'll have to move it into position. This is what it would look like though. When I rotate at 90 degrees counterclockwise, the hands of a clock move in this direction. So counterclockwise means I'm going to be moving in the opposite direction of the hands of the clock. So as I rotate this, I something to observe, you can see that this box that surrounds the triangle, I have this top edge that is completely horizontal. When I rotate it counterclockwise, I'm going to continue to rotate until that edge that was horizontal is now vertical. That's how I know I've gone 90 degrees. Now to get it, get it into position the way that it actually should be, here's what I want you to observe. Do you see how the original figure point C was one diagonal away from O. That means it's going to stay the same distance away from O even in its new position, one diagonal away. And with that drawn, hopefully you can also see that this is 90 degrees and I went in this direction that is the counterclockwise direction. Here's what it's going to look like in your applet. Cross your fingers and hopefully we have better luck this time. I'm going to reset it and skip on here to question three. To do a rotation, you first, the point is already here for us, so that's lucky. You're going to click on this button here, which is rotate around a point. <clears throat> and it says select the object to rotate and then the center point and then enter the angle. So here is the object to rotate. Here is the center and then it pops this up and it says, okay, which what, how much are we rotating? And the directions were 90 degrees, counterclockwise is selected, or you could select clockwise. We want to keep it counterclockwise, hit OK, and it rotated that, it twisted that figure until it was in position 90 degrees. That one worked better, I'm very happy. And our final one is our reflection. In figure four, we're going to reflect triangle ABC using line L. Line L is that mirror line, that's the reflection. So remember how those reflections work. If the triangle is facing this way, then it's going to flip to the other side and face this way. It's on the other side of that mirror. So again, not geometry software, so I have to do a little bit of finagling here to make this work, but I am going to flip it left and right. So it did reflect it, but it didn't reflect it across the line, it reflected it across its own center line. So in order to get it into position, I'm going to have to translate it. Some things to observe here. Point C stares into the mirror, straight into the mirror, and it's just one step away from the mirror, which means that the reflection, the mirror image, is also one step away from the mirror, but on the other side. That's why when you step closer to the mirror, your reflection also steps closer. Here's point B staring into that mirror three steps away. So the reflection is three steps away staring right back into that mirror. And uh, point A is five steps away from that mirror. So point A reflection is five steps away but staring directly into the mirror there. Now let's see what it looks like using the applet. Gonna reset everything. Hopefully everything works nicely. Let's move to question four. Here's our reflecting line. For a reflection, you're going to be selecting this tool. If you don't already have a line, you'll want to make sure that you build a line first, but the line is here given to us. So reflection, again, it says reflect by selecting the object first, then the line of reflection. So selecting that object, now clicking the line to reflect over, and you can see the exact same image that we did in the other software. C is one step away from the mirror, 
So C prime is one step away. B is three steps away, staring straight into the mirror. And B prime is three steps away, staring right into the mirror. Now, the next one, we're going to be doing the same types of transformations, but we're going to be using our isometric grid. Figure five, we're going to start by rotating 60 degrees counterclockwise using center point B. Now, I know that sounds a little bit challenging. We'll use a geometry software to help us out in a little bit, but I first want to point out how we would envision this just using our paper, pencil, and possibly some tracing paper. Point B is the center. So anytime I'm doing any sort of rotation, especially if I'm using some tracing paper, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to poke a hole wherever that center is so that I can just spin the paper around that center point, okay? It just twists right around. And that's kind of what I'm going to try and model here, but it is a little bit difficult because, again, not geometry software. Um, to make sure that we're getting the right angle. Remember, this is saying 60 degrees counterclockwise. And I know you're like, I don't know what 60 degrees looks like. But remember our notice and wonder, each one of these angles is 60 degrees, every one of them. Okay, so if we have this line segment right here, AB, notice that it's on that line. I can even extend it all the way through. Just take that whole line, and where is 60 degrees away from that going counterclockwise? Well, do you see this angle right here? That's a 60 degree angle, which means if I take this line, AB, and I rotate it 60 degrees, it is now going to be here. So that means this uh, line segment, AB, that forms that quadrilateral is going to rotate from that red line, and it's going to swing over to be on the orange line. So again, my geometry software doesn't let me choose the point, but there is that 60 degree rotation and when it's correctly in its position, it is going to be right here. See if you can figure out where figure six is going to be after a 60 degree clockwise rotation. This time we are using center C. So C is going to be the center of this rotation. So follow that same sort of idea like I did here, figure out what 60 degrees clockwise is going to look like. Pause the video long enough for you to do that. Again, here's the things that I wanted you to observe and hopefully you were able to figure out. This time I'm looking at DC because line segment DC is going through that center of rotation. So when I rotate at 60 degrees clockwise, Again, here's the line. These are 60 degree angles. So that means when I do that rotation, it is going to be going through this line. So CD that is here is going to be rotated to be on this line. It'll look something like this. Gotta love the technology and especially not using the geometry software. I'm gonna always have these little bugs. But there we go. Rotated around C and it rotated 60 degrees. What was CD on red line is now CD on the orange line. That's our 60 degrees. Let's pause for a second and let's take a look at the applet. We'll return and do figures seven and eight in just a second. Let's take a look at the applet here. Here's our isometric grid. The first one was a 60 degree clockwise rotation. Nope, 60 degrees counterclockwise rotation about point B. So all of these tools are still the same, okay? And we're first going to do our rotation. So rotate this object around point B and we're going 60 degrees counterclockwise. There you go, just like we thought it would be. Line segment AB is now going straight up and down, A prime, B prime. Let's reset it and take a look at problem number six. Remember, this one is the one where we're going 60 degrees clockwise around point C. So still clicking on this rotation tool, selecting the object, selecting this point, and we're going to type in 60 degrees, but make sure you're selecting clockwise 
And just like we saw on our last slide, that's exactly where it looks to be. What I want you to do before we do anything else, please practice and play around with this applet. I don't want you to just watch the video. I want you to actually practice and play around with those applets. I want you to know how to use this geometry software. Supposing you pause the video to practice that, I'm going to continue on with figure 7 and figure 8. Figure 7 says reflect quadrilateral ABCD using line L. Again, this is always so difficult to try and model with non-geometry software. So I did the reflection, but then I still need to move it into position. And that's where it's going to be. Um, one way that I suggest that you do reflections if you do not have geometry software and you're just using old-fashioned tracing paper, um, fold on that line of reflection. So I'm going to just draw a quick figure on my own. And a reflection is simply just folding it across that line. So I can fold it across that line and see where it's going to be, trace it into the new position, and now I can see the original and the reflection. And I know that's difficult for you guys to see there in the camera, uh, but Use the tools that you have available. If you have a nice, clear, uh, thin piece of paper um, that you can see through, use that as your tracing paper or just use our geometry software. Some things to observe, again, on the reflection. Notice C, it kind of goes through the center of that triangle and then the other side, it's that same distance. B, we can see it goes through the center of two triangles, so we see B prime through the center of two triangles. D was through the center of one triangle, so the reflection is on the other side, and so on. So we can observe all those same reflection properties that we saw with our uh, regular rectangular grid, same that we're seeing here with our isometric grid. And let's do that one in the applet. I'm going to reset and move to problem seven. Here's our reflection line. So we click the reflection tool, select the quadrilateral, select the line to reflect across, and it is exactly in that position. And finally, our last one that we're going to do, we are going to translate quadrilateral ABCD so that A goes to C. So we're just simply sliding it over to the right, and it will look just like that. In the applet, resetting, skipping to problem eight. <laughs> Hopefully it's going to work this time. I'm going to select my vector first. So A is going to move into the position of C. So now I can do translate by vector, which means I'm going to take this figure and translate it this amount. I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong. I'm really having a hard time figuring out what's going on. So I'll just translate it by hand. And there it is. So I hope that you're having more success with the applet. If you're not, please know that you're not alone in the struggle. We're all having the same issue. Um, I'm not going to go over each one of these applets in detail in the future lessons. I did this time because I really want you to know what those different tools do, what they mean, how you can make them work for you. Um, so please make sure you're taking the time now to practice those and know how they all work. Let's switch back over so that we can finish up our lesson. And uh, this is a really great exercise. It talks about um, how do we undo each one of the moves. It's pretty, it's pretty intuitive. Um, each move can be undone by using another move. For example, to undo the effect of translating three units to the right, we could translate three units to the left. That takes us back to where we started. So I want you to take a second and think, how do I undo each of these moves? Pause the video long enough that you can figure that out. And I hope that you realize that we can undo translating three units up by translating three units down. Notice the vocabulary that I'm using. I'm not saying slide or shift anymore. I'm saying translate. That's what I want you to start practicing as well. To translate one unit up and one unit to the left, we can undo that by translating one unit down. and one unit right. Moving right 
will undo the left, and moving down will undo the up. To rotate 30 degrees clockwise around point P, if I want to undo that, we would simply rotate 30 degrees counterclockwise around point P. And this is the fun one. How do I undo reflecting across line L? You just reflect it back. Now, if you are following along in the PDF, you're going to notice that the PDF goes straight to the cooldown. We're not quite ready for the cooldown yet. I will come back to the cooldown. I just printed it that way so that um, I could squeeze more onto one sheet of paper. We're going to talk about the summary here. When a figure is on a grid, we can use the grid to describe a transformation. For example, here is a figure and an image in the figure after a move. So here is the pre-image. We talked about that last time. That's the original, the one that came before. This is the image. The move that happened is it was translated four units to the right and three units down. So we can see every one of those points went four units to the right and three units down. Not just A, but B went four right and four three down. D went four right and three down, and so did C. So did all of the others. Uh, we also learned today about the isometric grid. The isometric grid is made up of equilateral triangles, and the angles in all the triangles each measure 60 degrees, which means that this isometric grid is really helpful whenever we want to do 60 degree rotations. We can see that quadrilateral KLMN was rotated 60 degrees counterclockwise to become K prime, L prime, M prime, N prime. And now you're ready for your cooldown. Um, in this figure, we want to know which images are translations of triangle A. Take a second and select all that apply. Which ones did you come up with? B is a translation. All we did is we shift it two units down. C is not a translation. C is actually a reflection. D is a translation. That one was three units to the right and one unit down. E is not a translation. E is also a reflection. And F is not a translation. F is also not a reflection either. It is a rotation. So not a translation, but a rotation. That's your cooldown, and that is your lesson. Um, the only other thing that I want to mention is if you are looking in Canvas, the are you ready for more was a little bit different. Um, it's just wanting you to practice a little bit more, wants you to play around with the applet, practice doing those transformations, and I do encourage you to do that. Take the time to really understand how that software works, um, how you can do those transformations. Um, your homework is going to be the rest of that packet for those who printed it, and it's on the next page for those who did not print it. Um, your homework is going to be right here. Um, this one, I am telling you, it is really difficult to do in Canvas. So even if you did it, print it, excuse me, even if you didn't print it before, I want you to print it now um, because it's easier to just answer all the questions on the paper and then take a picture of it and scan it in instead of trying to explain how you did the reflection on Canvas. Just do the reflection on your own paper and get that submitted. Um, if you wanted to use that applet, that applet here on the are you ready for more? That could be really helpful for that homework. So see if you can build those figures in that applet and do those dif different transformations, or hopefully you can figure out some something that you can use for your tracing paper to help you make those transformations. As always, don't hesitate to contact me via email if you have any questions. Um, that's it for now. We'll see you next time.